what we're going to do is we're going to time this engine the right way. And my buddy Mike let me borrow a timing degree wheel. And uh, he's an engine builder by trade, and he showed me what to do here. So what I've done is I've borrowed this degree wheel from him. And uh, you'll see it down here on my vise. And the first thing we need to do is get holes in it that will mount up to the flywheel. What I've done is I've measured the diameter of the degree wheel, which was 9 inches. I measured my flywheel screen, which is 8 and eighth, which tells me there's 7 eighths extra divided by 2 is 7 sixteenths. So I measured in 7 sixteenths on four different spots here, 90 degrees apart. And I've just vice gripped the flywheel screen onto here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my drill press and drill uh, holes here, two quarter inch holes. I don't need to do all four. Two is good enough. And uh, that will give us a way to mount this onto the flywheel. So let's do that. Well, we've got our degree wheel mounted to the engine. And now I'm going to try to find the real top dead center. And according to my engine guy, I could have been off as much as 10 degrees just finding top dead center unofficially. So what I did is I got this little magnetic block base from Harbor Freight and I got this dial indicator. And that will allow me to move the flywheel up and down and find exactly where the highest point is, which is top dead center. So what we're going to attempt to do is see where the highest spot is here. So let's see here. That is a uh, All right, so let's say that's our zero point. So let's see, we're going down. We'll go up. Let's see, actually, it gets a little bit higher than zero. Let's see. Right there is our top dead center. So what we need to do is reference a point on the flywheel onto the... Uh, degree wheel here for that. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take a piece of coat hanger, bolt it on one of these things and have it point to the wheel. And then we're going to turn the wheel 20 degrees and that will be where we are when it's off by the um, 20 degrees before top dead center. So we'll double check our measurements here. We're about a tick after zero. There we go. I've re-zeroed it. And We'll go down, we'll go up, we never get higher than that zero. So right there is where our top dead center is, totally scientifically. And that is going to be the basis for the rest of this project. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this piece of coat hanger here, and I'm basically just going to bolt it onto one of these head bolts. Actually, I'm going to use this one over here by the exhaust. That way it's away from the piston. So let's just do this. We'll bolt this on here. I just bent a little loop around a coat hanger, put a washer on it and a 3 8 bolt. And uh, I'm just going to tighten that up real quick. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to reference this to something on this degree wheel. So, let's see. It doesn't matter what you use to reference it. All we have to know is you got to move it 20 degrees. So, if we were to come over here, this is going to be hard to get this to reference very good because it's so far away. But, uh, let me see if I can get this going. Please. kind of flimsy it's stretched out so far let's see right, we'll 
go over here a little bit. All right, so my mark is set on 140 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back to 160, which would be 20 degrees off. And that's really the basis of our 20 degree before top dead center timing. So I'm going to roll it back here. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. So I'm at zero. I'll double check my gauge. Let's see. Here's my top dead center, right at the 140 mark. So I'll go back to 120, which right there is my 20 degrees before top dead center. And if I look at my crank trigger visually here, it's off quite a bit. So what, what my friend told me to do here is to make a mark on the flywheel where this timing mark is going to be. And he told me to take a little hacksaw blade or something and just make a little notch there. And quite honestly, it's going to be very hard for me to get this mark to back here. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is taking a, a T, like a square or something, and putting it across here so I can get an accurate marking back there of where this 20 degrees before top dead center is. But I mean, I can see just looking at this that my timing here is off by about an eighth of an inch from where it really should be. So what I'm going to have to do is make a little groove in this bracket here. I'll use a round file that will allow me to slide this trigger back and forth to adjust the timing. So I'm going to take the, this bolt out and file it down because it needs to move this way. But uh, that will be how we do this. So if I go back to 140, again, I should be right on my zero, which I am. So that's good. Right there is my top dead center. And uh, we will move it again. Like I said, we'll go out our 20 degrees and we'll make that mark. So right there is our 120. So again we're off a hair and if you're off a hair it actually matters in this application because if it doesn't fire at exactly the right spot it's not going to work right so that will be our our timing method so I'm going to transfer this 120 degree mark to the back of the flywheel here and I am going to take a hacksaw blade or something to make a little notch in there so we can use a timing light to time it properly. Well guys I'm back to time in the Onan here and uh, what I did is I again I found top dead center with my dial indicator at the highest point of the piston and I have this pointer that will come down to the degree wheel here. I bolted the degree wheel on the flywheel I just used the metal screen as a template to drill two holes. And when I found top dead center, that line just references to some mark. It doesn't matter what mark. And then what you do is you just roll your flywheel back 20 degrees. And when I rolled it back 20 degrees, I made a reference mark with a Sharpie over here next to the 20 degree mark on the timing cover. So now I'm gonna put my head back on and start it up and get out my timing light and see if it's actually set at 20 degrees. And I think that I'm gonna have to retard my timing a little bit here, which is gonna mean I'm gonna basically take a round file and elongate this hole and probably end up having to slide the sensor to the left a little bit. So let me put my head back together here and take the degree wheel off and uh, we'll start up the engine and get the timing light out and see uh, what's happening here.
Now, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but my timing is off about 40 degrees. I'm supposed to be at 20 degrees negative over here, and the timing light was showing it way down here, like 20 degrees positive. So I got to try to figure this out here, and I'm going to take the sensor off. And like I said, I'm going to make a big slot in there with a round file, put it back on and start it up again and see, see where we're at. In fact, it's so far off that I may just bring it inside and drill another hole like a half inch down the line there. So let's give it a shot. We'll drill a new hole and then we'll try it again. All right, guys, I was having trouble with my timing. And if you remember, I was saying that the timing was hitting way down here where I made this Sharpie line instead of up here where the 20 is. And it turns out that the polarity on my crank trigger I had backwards. So I flip flopped those wires and right away my timing was at 18 degrees. So I kind of drilled more holes in the bracket here and moved it back and I got it to 25. So I'm just trying to find that sweet spot of where it's at 20. And I'm using a 025 feeler gauge here for my air gap on my trigger. That seems to work pretty good. The other thing that I found out is that the ignition it has uh, no timing advance like maybe the original one might have. So it's very hard to crank the engine with the timing and the position it should be when it's running. So what I've done is I found out that you've got to have the ignition turned off while you're cranking the motor. And then once it starts going, then you can turn the ignition on and it will fire. And my crude way of doing this for testing is I just unpulled the spark plug wire. Then after it cranked about three times, I shoved the spark plug wire on and it starts right up. So I'm probably going to have to make some kind of switch to deal with that. But we're going to test it again. Well guys, I'm trying to dial in my timing here and I tried drilling a bunch of holes and the first hole that I had in the middle was probably at about 18 degrees. This one here that I drilled right next to it is about 22. So I'm going to just take a little uh, cutoff wheel or grinder wheel on my Dremel here and make these holes into a nice slot so I can slide the bolt right back and forth and get it somewhere right in the middle of those two holes and that should get me right about to the 20 degrees I need to be in and uh, once I get it to the exact spot I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more and paint it and um, that's pretty exciting and then we'll be pretty much done here